Hey everybody, what I'm going to talk about now is what's called the long run Phillips curve. So in class, we talked about the short run Phillips curve, right? It shows you uh, the, the short run trade off between unemployment and inflation. When, when a one is high, the other tends to be low. When the, when, so like when an unemployment is high, inflation tends to be low and vice versa. And so we get a negatively sloping short run Phillips curve, right? But now I want to talk about the long run because in the long run, that trade off between inflation and unemployment, it goes away. It's not a thing anymore. Okay, and so if it's not a thing, that's going to give us a different looking curve in the long run. So let's talk about how that long run curve looks. But first, before we do that, I want to go back to this because this is going to get us to where we want to be over here in the long run Phillips curve. So let's talk about this long run aggregate supply curve. So if you remember, when we talk about long run aggregate supply, right, we have this vertical line. Where is it vertical? Okay, it's vertical at full employment, right, at potential output, okay, at maximum sustainable capacity. And our, and our unemployment rate at this point, okay, is our natural rate, right? We're at full employment. Now, here's the thing. In the long run, it doesn't matter where our price level is. Our price level could be here, our price level could be here, or our price level could be here. It does not matter. Every single time, no matter what our price level is, our output doesn't change. It stays exactly the same in the long run. So this price level has no impact on this output in the long run. It has no impact at all. Well, here's the thing, guys. The way that we figure out what's going on with unemployment is what's going on with output, right? When output rises, unemployment falls. When output decreases, unemployment increases, okay? So if our price level, when it changes, right, when we're experiencing inflation or deflation or whatever, right, when it changes, if our output doesn't change, then what that means, what that tells us is that inflation and unemployment are no longer related to each other, okay? There's no trade-off anymore. Okay, so what we're saying is, is that regardless of what this value is of inflation, this unemployment rate isn't changing, right? No matter what this price level does, right, this output level doesn't change. So our unemployment doesn't change. So what kind of curve would show that? The, a curve that would show that would be a straight line. This would be our long run Phillips curve. Okay, it's a vertical line, all right? And it's a vertical line at a particular unemployment rate. What unemployment, unemployment rate would that be? Well, that would be our natural rates of unemployment, okay? So what I mean by that is, if we're operating on this long run curve over here at full employment output, then what it means is that we're also operating on this long run curve at full at natural rate of unemployment or full employment, okay? So that's how we can see like why this curve is vertical. It's based on the reason, the same reasons over here, right? Why this curve is vertical, okay? Inflation and unemployment are no longer linked to each other. Okay, now what I want to talk about is, okay, so now we have our long run curves, right? Well, what happens when we add in our short runs and how does that look in terms of long run equilibrium? All right, now, if you look on this graph right here, right? We're at long run equilibrium. How do I know that? We're operating on our long run aggregate supply curve, okay? We're at point A right here at this price level, at this equilibrium point A, right? With this price level and this output. All right, so we're in long run equilibrium over here. So how does long run equilibrium look up on, on this graph? Well, we got to add in our short run Phillips curve. And where the two curves intersect, that's our long run equilibrium, okay? So this point, a, this point A and this point A, they correlate to the same thing. So like, we're in the same situation. So this would be our inflation rate at this equilibrium. And then this is our unemployment rate at this equilibrium over here, right? So now we have this graph, we have this graph, and both of them are showing the same situation, but just showing us with different um, variables. And then finally, we can add in this last graph right here, right? This is our production possibilities curve, consumer goods, and then capital goods, okay? Capital goods. And if we're operating on this point A, or operating at this point A, well, where are we on this? Well, we're at, on the curve, right, at this point A. So all three of these graphs are showing us the same thing. They're just showing us with different variables, right? Output and price level here, inflation and unemployment here, consumer goods and capital goods here. So the final thing I want to talk about is, all right, so what happens when we get out of long-run equilibrium? How does this adjust and how do we see it? Okay, so let's do that now. All right, so now we're at long-run equilibrium, right? And let's say something happens. Let's say maybe, um, let's say our interest rates decrease. Okay, so our interest rates go down. If interest rates decrease, then consumption and investment will rise, and as a result, aggregate demand will rise. So AD would shift to the left, right? And now we're at this equilibrium right here. I'll call that equilibrium point B, okay? At a higher output, at a higher price level. 
Okay? So our price level has gone up. So what has happened to inflation? Inflation has increased here, right? Inflation has increased because price level has gone up. Our output has gone up. So what has unemployment done? Unemployment has gone down. So price, so inflation is up, unemployment is down. So how is that going to look on here? Well, that means that this value on this y-axis is going up, inflation is going up. This value on the x-axis is going down, unemployment is going down. So we're moving to a point along this curve. Because remember, right, changes in aggregate demand move us along short-run Phillips curves to this higher inflation rate here at inflation rate 2 and this lower unemployment rate here, unemployment 2. So unemployment has gone down, inflation has gone up. Okay, so now what's going to happen? Well, if the government and the Federal Reserve Bank don't do anything and we just allow the economy to fix itself, what's going to happen here, okay? Let's talk about another new kind of topic here that's sort of related to stuff we've done in the past, but it's, it's, it's kind of, it's like a new way to look at it. So over here, what we learned earlier in the year was that, okay, right now, inflation is high, right? That means that, um, it means that uh, eventually as we move to a long run equilibrium, right, that uh, nominal wages are going to start to rise in the long run. That's going to cause the cost to produce to go up. It's going to force the short run aggregate supply curve to shift to the left to get to a long run equilibrium. Okay, and that's still the case. But what I want to talk about now is expectations. Okay, the expectations about inflation are very important. All right, you, whenever we make long term plans, all right, we always think about like what we think inflation is going to be. So here's the thing, guys. When we had long-term plans, we expected inflation to be at a certain rate back here when we were at long-run equilibrium. Well, that inflation rate has now changed, okay? So it's made us adjust our, our expectations. And when we adjust our expectations, what do we need to do? Well, we say like, okay, the price level is going up, right? We need to adjust our expectations to a higher um, inflation rate. So what should we demand? We should demand our nominal wages rise. So that idea of nominal wages rising is still a thing. It's still true. It's still happening like we've always talked about. It's just that we're adding an extra little degree here. It's that the fact that people expectations change about the future, and so they demand higher nominal wages. And so as a result of those higher nominal wages, short-run aggregate supply shifts to the left. And now we have an, a third equilibrium, equilibrium point C. And at equilibrium point C, price level has risen. Output has fallen back to our uh, maximum sustainable capacity right there, right? At full employment output. Okay, so what's going on? Well, when the short run aggregate supply curve shifts to the left, price level is going up, unemployment is going up, they're both increasing. So what is that going to do? It's going to cause that short run Phillips curve to shift to the right because the inflation and unemployment rates are both rising. And how far is it going to shift to the right? Well, it's going to shift to the right until we adjust to this new inflation rate that we, we now expect. Okay, so our short run Phillips curve shifts to this point. We operate at point C now at a higher inflation rate than we now expect. Our unemployment rate drops back, or sorry, rises back to natural rate of unemployment, right? We're at our long run equilibrium. We're at our long run equilibrium. And that is the long run Phillips curve and how we get back to long run equilibrium through this adjustment of expectations that causes changes here. And then we can see those changes here.